no single engineer's cup of tea to be able to put together or have all the knowledge that is required for lighting and air conditioning, communication systems and so on. So different people come together, form a team and carry out this exercise of planning and designing a metro system. It could be stations, it could be the track, it could be the control room, it could be the maintenance yard and so on. So now, 
Coming to the food for thought, this is a type 2 assignment as I said, we will probably not give you many solution because there is no solution to it. Find out the different cities in the world with well-developed metro systems. Now, in this day and age, where information is not really at a premium, you can get information from a lot of sources. It's easier to find information. The more important issue or the trickier part is analyzing that information and using it to understand the subject matter of the system better. So, if we look at places like Tokyo or New York, London, Moscow, which have well-developed metro systems. Now, of course, we can include Delhi in that list. If we try to understand, look into the history and find out when were these systems built, what was the kind of technical issues addressed and how, that will make us understand the roles of different engineers better. The second question that I want to leave for you is study the details of the metro system in any three cities which could include important stations in the network. Delhi may have a certain number of stations. If you look at the Tokyo metro network, you'll find certain number of stations. If you look at the New York metro system, you'll have a different number of stations. And the more the number of stations, the more the number of lines, the more complex the system becomes. And that makes the planning that much harder. Have we ever thought that when we change lines at a particular platform, how do those lines go? So, for example, if you are talking of a line which connects point A to point B and a line which connects point C to point D, how do these lines actually go as far as their layout is concerned? This here, as far as the roads are concerned, we can easily have a crossing. We can have traffic signals to control whether the traffic is moving between A and B or the traffic is moving C and D and whether the left turns are allowed, right turns are allowed and so on and so forth. When it comes to metros, those kind of degrees of freedom, if you want to call them, don't exist. But how do the lines cross? lines will cross means that there have to be tunnels or it will be a grade separated system. And if it's a grade separation, what should be the minimum clearance? So these are the kind of things which are technical details we have to keep in mind when we try to do the layout planning of a metro system. So I would like you to pay special attention when you try to study the metro systems in different cities as to what are the kind of depths involved in these lines. The thumb rule basically is that if the line is very shallow, the line was probably one of the earlier lines that was built in that system. As we moved in time, 10 years later, 15 years later, we want to add a line, then obviously we'll have to go deeper in the system. And that poses technical challenges which we need to address. Try to determine the total length of the metro system. Try to understand the total number of special structures in that metro system and try to see what is the average passenger traffic in a day in those metro systems. So that will give you an idea that, okay, this system is designed to handle a million people at 100 stations. So what is the peak demand? So how is the passenger movement being controlled at different stations? in different trains, and so on. Let me assure you that if you do a thorough literature survey on this, or if you look at some videos which are available for different uh, metro systems, you will be able to make some very interesting observations. With this, I must repeat the reference books, but these reference books are not really centered on metro construction. They are more related to the course on construction management itself. So, in fact, you will probably have to look for some material on your own and try to understand the metro systems better. Thank you. Project. Construction is a process 
which consist of assembling or building infrastructure it includes all work and materials required for the construction of finished structures this also includes site foundations preparations electrical work mechanical work and any work required to complete the project it means that the construction project will include all the works as well as materials required for the construction work as well as includes preparation for electrical work mechanical work or any work required to complete the project here are a few types of construction project the first one is residential project next one is building project another one is commercial and institutional project the next one is industrial project fifth one is highway project and the last one is heavy project now we will see one by one each and every type of project in detail starting with the residential project these projects include town houses houses apartments cottages subdivisions and single unit dwellings the designs are usually made by engineers and architects and construction executed by the builder it means that all the designing work is done by the engineers as well as by the architects and construction work is executed by the builders now the next type of project is the building project constructing building is the most common type of project it is a process of adding structures to properties most projects are small renovations or room additions type project most new building projects involve construction of sheltered enclosure with access for housing people machinery equipment and supplies it also includes installation of equipments and utilities that is known as building project now the next project is the commercial and institutional project these buildings include a whole lot of project sizes and types like hospitals clinics schools universities stadiums sport facilities shopping centers retail stores warehouses manufacturing plants etc special engineers and architects are usually hired for the construction of these buildings there are very few competitors in this market segment since it cost a lot of money and requires greater sophistication in terms of commercial and institutional buildings when compared with residential projects now the next one is industrial project this is just a small part of the construction industry but is a very important part nonetheless the projects are usually owned by large industrial corporations like medicines power generation manufacturing petroleum etc now the next type of project is highway project these involves alteration repair and construction of roads streets alleys highways runways path etc it also includes incidental constructions now the next one is heavy project these projects stands to involve projects which are not classified properly as building or highways some examples includes dams sewer line projects sewage treatment facilities dredging projects flood control projects water treatment plants etc these are some of the most popular types of construction projects today that is all about the type of construction project thank you very much students hello friends please subscribe my channel today i am going to explain you stages of construction project which is very important for all the civil engineer so i request you to watch this video till end so you don't miss anything
It is the initial stage. In the initial stage, there is a, some points. First is the concept and feasibility. Concept and feasibility studies, we can say that it is used to determine the viability of an idea. Whatever the idea we have taken, we just see that ki whether it is viable or not. Such as ensuring a project is legally and technically feasible. Check the feasibility legally, technically, economically, whether it is feasible or not. The next stage is formation of project strategy. So project strategy is a plan of action designed to achieve a long term or overall aim. So we can say it is a part of project planning. So next stage is finalization of scope of work, specification, preliminary engineering and design. And then the finalization of contract document, GCC, SCC, BOQ and preliminary estimate. So all these things we finalize the contract documents for the tendering. We can say that the tender documents. So this is the initial stage of the project. Now I am going to next one. In the tendering and contracting stage. So tendering and contracting stage, there are some points. The floating of tender, first of all, after completion of tendering, we uh, completion of the tender documents, we float the tenders to the vendors. And next is evaluation of tender. Evaluation of tender is done by the contractor. First of all, he evaluate the tender and fill the tender. And then after the evaluation and filling the tender, he submit the tender to the client. After uh, getting the tender documents, the client evaluate it now and then they call the technical and commercial negotiation meeting. Next one is or we can say that the final finalization of the award of contract. So after that we finalize the contract and award to this contract to the contract selected. So these are the points that this is the tendering and contracting stage. This is the execution stage. Generally, the people who are involved in the execution, so they they involved in this stage. The third stage, this is the execution stage. Maybe it actually the execution stage is a, a long stage and maybe two or three years or four years, depending on the project capacity. Or so I am going to the uh, explain the execution stage preparation of execution plan. First of all, the planning engineer, they prepare the execution plan, the schedule, all these things that they prepare. And then the mobilization stage. The mobilization stage means the contractor mobilize their machineries, their staff, their materials, all these things. So this is the mobilization stage. Next one is construction stage. In this construction stage, now we construct the building they started the construction and this is the main stage we can say that of the project and last of the execution stage is finishing and services stage in this the electrical plumbing firefighting HVAC etc this is done so this is also the part of the execution stage without that the building is incomplete and now we move to the next one We can say that the last one, the post construction stage. After constructing the project, what we do that handing over this handing over the project to the client or the customer directly. So this is the handing over stage. Next one is defect liability period. Defect liability period for the contractor. So in this period the contractor do the all the rectification of that project.
and last one is operation or utilization of stage and this is the operation or utilization of stage actually operation or utilization of stage is started before the sometimes uh, before the defect liability period we handing over and the operation the utilization is started and then defect liability period is started sometimes it happened that handing over not done so the defect liability period has started already so this time it may be some changes may be happen so these are the stages of the construction which i elaborate here and uh, thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe my channel and uh,